the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. Ebro in the Morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, our bro. Static Selector yeah. has a new album out. Uh, Name of the album. Round Trip. Who's on it? Everyone. Who but isn't on there? It's hard to answer that. I, got, I need like the, the list. All right, I'm, I got you. I got you. Right, go. I'm going to list Just, you up. First of all, it comes out of the gate with an, the one I've been playing uh, most recently is the one with Pasta Noose yeah. called For Dave. Yeah. You can, you get the vibe of that dedication to Trugoy. Uh, let's see. There's Ransom, AZ, Benny the Butcher, Terminology, Stove God, Simba, Nina Sky, Raekwon, Deck and Ghostface, Conway, Bum B, Absol, uh, Joey Badass, MOP, Cormega, uh, Boldy James, Nems, God Fahim, G Easy, IDK, a lot. It's a lot of people. It's a lot man. of people. Yo, you and G Easy got some moments together. Yeah, uh, man, you and him. you and Joey Badass have some phenomenal moments. Together. I mean, a lot of them. That's run not the, even yeah, you that's, 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 like that's, a, that's like that's your life. I have a whole discography just with Joey. Joey, yeah. Uh, and shout to Joey. Um, Are you still when, Joey's DJ? Nah, I stopped in uh, two thousand. I want to say late two thousand seven. I mean, 2017. I'm okay, sorry, man. because uh, you know my daughter was getting bigger, and I was just. It was kind of starting to be a conflict with certain things. Right. And, you know, I got bigger. I was doing bigger stuff on my own, too. I just signed a Rock Nation. I was doing, like, all kinds of bigger gigs. And me and Joey just kind of had, like, an understanding, like, shot my man Pow P. Pow P went out there and filled in and just kind of just stayed that way. Took over. But I still do, you know, most of the music. I did more than half his album. Right. Uh, that, I just want to let you know bro. that the artwork for your album is... Thank yeah. you. Shout out to Chris Murray, Dom Dirty, my man Photo Rob. That was like a group project because it's supposed to be like Roger Rabbit. Yeah, I, yeah, I get those vibes. Oh, I it's at it. so and, fire. and you got your daughter on the cover. Yep. Look, um, it's so good. Talk dad life for us, man. Balancing work and dad life. Yeah, it's everything. You know, the last album was called The Balancing Act, and she was on there with me, but it was like in the middle of COVID. So it was re a really weird time to drop an album and uh, just weird time in general. But, you know, things have got... Definitely a lot better in my personal life since then. Like, me and her just, like, live this life, and it's really great. Shout out to her mom for, you know, being a great mom, and just we divide the time, and, like, the co-parenting's great. How uh, how much has it gave you clarity, you know, being a dad? Like, just, just health-wise, work-wise, like, the whole Everything. thing. Everything. It gives me—I mean, it saved my life because I was DJing, you know— um, pr pretty much seven days a week traveling all over the world. Like, we were jumping on planes, you know. There was literally times we'd be on, like, five planes in one day in Europe. Like, just, that really wears down on you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you, you kind of can't, you can't overstate how, what that, the toll that takes. Yeah, I, I mean, over, I toured for over 10 years straight, so, and I still, like, my schedule's thir uh, Monday through Thursday with my daughter, and then those other days I DJ travel, I might go to London, Paris, whatever, and come right back. And it's like, it's the perfect balance. The, uh, I want to, your style of production mm -hmm. at this stage of your career, um, has, I mean, from the beginning to now, like, it's almost like you have an in-house band. Like you, you're really like on, this ain't just beat making anymore. This nah, is I a mean, whole other level. I'll always have the the grimy go straight to the record, make a beat. Like I'll always do that. A lot of this album is that, but I do have some amazing musicians around me, like uh, Dream Life, who sends me he sends me like original pieces of music that he creates, and then I flip them like right. a record. Uh, AJ Hall on the drums, he basically like recreates drum breaks for me. Say I hear like a drum break that I'm not gonna be able to like get, get away clear, with. Get, He'll just yeah. redo it, and he does such a great job. Shout out to Benny Reed who plays sax. Um, my man Surya on the keys, like I. Anyone, anything I need really done is like fast. So when it's time to replay, a lot of people come to me to replay samples for them. Well, and I wanted to point that out for the audience too, because I, you know, often you hear the, I don't know, dismay, if you will, of it's, what's it's going on in hip hop, right? Like it ain't this and it ain't that. But there's phenomenal music being made, whether it's specifically for people to rap on it or mm -hmm. it's the music you're making, uh, you know, for your albums or even when you're looking at what The Alchemist is doing or what you're looking at some of the jazz musicians, Terrace yeah. Martin, Robert Glasper, and these guys are making like original compositions and original things yeah. that contribute in a real way to the future of music. It, it helps the whole progression because it's like, you know, boom bap, Cats are making the same kind of beat forever. And, like, when you add all this live music, like, you add musicians, you add... I love, like, my whole thing is I use a lot of 808s tuned a certain way, and that's kind of, like, my secret weapon. Um, but, like, it just... It's going to really give us another... I don't know how many, but a lot more uh, lifetime than the original, you know, just basic... Chopping and yeah. sampling. Well, that, that, that was a change that happened, because there was a period when... If 
for me to find records to play on my show that fit what I was looking for, they all felt a little retro-y. Yeah. And I, I, when people would say, like, ah, you playing stuff that sounds old, I kind of had to be like, yeah, kind of. And then we figured out sort of how to continue yeah. to evolve Boom Bap into something then new. Then you get the Pro Eras and the Odd Futures and right. the, the Griseldas and the Show Off Records and the, you know, like, it, there was a whole wave that, um you know, I've been there since the beginning of and now I'm so proud of where it's got to because it really was that. How, how influenced early on were you by the Pete's and Premieres? Because that's all you got. I mean, I, early on, the, if there was a knock on Static Selecta before people knew how good you'd eventually become, it was like, oh, he's dope. Sounds like Premier and yeah, Pete. Yeah, but they did that to Alchemist. They did it. They do that to everybody that, you know, comes up so inspired by it. Like, right, which how could you not be? It's hip-hop. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm just as inspired by Alchemist as I am Primo and Pete Rock and Q-Tip and Dilla. Like, it's all, it's all just the stuff we love and that we fell in love with and... Now it's a responsibility we have, you too, with your radio show. I mean, the late the late night show is like we hold the torch for something that like if we didn't fight for that, like some of this might not even be here right That's now. Right. For real. And there That's were right. times when it was really dry. It was a real scary time. And right now it's not. Like right now there's a lot of, there's, out there. I think it's like 2000. I got to shout out like, I got to shout out Term. I got to shout out Sky Zoo. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got to shout Torre. out like that. Torre. That era right there, like the 2006 to 2009 was kind of like the try, the trying era for underground hip-hop yes. that led to right. everything going on. There. Yeah, that's when I got on. Rock Marcy. Rock Marcy started a Rock whole Marcy, wave. Well, he's, he, he bridges the gap yeah. from the then to now. Yeah. You know? But now it's like a beautiful time. Like, you look at the artists on your project. These guys all have flourishing careers. Yeah, no, nah, it's a beautiful place. To, to what degree uh, is also people figuring out the business model, right? Like how to actually make money outside of labels and not being concerned yeah. with playing that game. I mean, the Does merch that contribute game, to this? All that. The, there's so much now. Like the, this income streams that you never thought in a million years would be realistic. Like I do stuff with Reese's peanut butter cups. Like I do crazy <laughs> stuff. And it's like it's all. How much do you even think about the money with regard to pro albums and, and stuff? I mean, I don't, the albums will always be a passion project for me because compared to like everything else I do, it's like kind of like just a business card. Obviously, I love the music on it, but it doesn't, it, it's not a, it's I, not you a can't revenue look at, generator. You can't like, you know, you know, uh, a dozen in one hand and then what's the saying? I'm six in one and a half yeah, dozen in the other. Like yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, six on one hand, half a dozen on the other. It's like, you can't do that with music. I don't do it with it. I'll never do it. I like that you said it's like a business card. Yeah. Like, but you, you, it's a passion project and a business card. It's like people will search for Static Selective and find all this awesome and music. And it's a continuation it of stuff. my mixtape history. Like, mixtapes right. were everything to me. Drama gets arrested. Like, my life got flipped upside down. I always use it as a reference because it was real for all of us that were doing mixtapes. It was like, that was it. It was it ended in one second. Yeah. It's not like it, like, trickled down, oh, next yeah. week. These sites were like, they. you go on mix unit, it was gone. All the mixtapes were gone within like five minutes. And that was a pivotal moment where I was like, if I don't take production serious, I'm going to just end up either. It, it just was something that like was part of my destiny as far as I always wanted to be like Primo. And I wasn't taking beats that serious at that point. So that moment was like, time to put your foot on the gas. You know those moments in your life where you're like, I have to leap right now? Yeah. That was it. Let's play uh, the record with Pasta News. Yeah, man. Project. Shout out to him for putting uh, such a great moment. In, uh, what else should we play off this new project right now? Let's get into the Wu-Tang joint. I mean, come on. Got to do it. Static Select is here. Uh, go get the project. It's available on Apple Music, Round Trip. Um, I, I listen to... I'm going to just let you know what I listen to all the time for me. Like, I have specific songs that I, I literally play once a week. Oh, really? I'm curious. To you show me a lot of love on uh, Show Me by Joey. Show Me. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. a hit record, man. If we were in a different time, like me and Joey had a convo about that song, and it's like, we're just in such a weird time right now where, like, I got to be careful how I word it. Like, just, like, the imagery in that video. You, you seen the video? Yeah, yeah. That's not promoted by, like, pop culture right now. That's right. right. And if, if what, this black was... black love and, and a positive just like, relationship. I gotta be very careful how to word it. Like, just that... Uh, the fact that it's just so kind of um, traditional, like... With, it's like something you see in a Spike Lee movie in, like, the late 80s. Yeah, just a, a But happy, now everything lovely... has to be, like, 
oh, I got to be a Puerto Rican girl with a black eye now and this and that. Like, it was just a straight black love video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Urban, like, it's a hit record, but I feel like the system don't push it their way. You you guys have been great up here. We playing, tried. We played it like, every morning for a long time. Yeah. That song should be like... Yeah. Out of here. Out that of here. that but that eight album that you put out in two seven mm -hmm. twenty seventeen, I play a lot. Thank the, you. the run the jewels on there, ain't a damn thing changed. The action Bronson joint, Thanks, like that project. And then the uh, what was the other project? Was that the one that had the two chains all over it too? You had a whole project with two chains. Well, that's not out. That never came Chains out was on eight. Chains he was, was on, on eight. Bounce. He's been on a couple of my albums, but our album is. And we've been talking. Yeah, about Yeah, where it is the two chains out? It's in my phone right here. <laughs> um, nah, when you hear like. That we brought it to heights that are like, it's ridiculous. This is his like reasonable doubt. I just can't wait for people to hear it. Well, and you told me some of the features are insane too. Uh, right? it's, it got crazy. How it long got are you got crazy. To yeah, it. no, it's, cra it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like, what are we doing? When? Like, crazy. When? He said some crazy things to me. He said crazy things. Like, to me. And then he said it got crazier. And then he said it got crazier. Got, oh, no, it keeps getting crazier. Like, people are going to see. And it's not about the features, by the way, because even if it was just changed, the album's a classic. But He's incredible. This is like. I've been, you know, at this point, I don't hold my breath, but it's coming. It's, so I, you're waiting on Def Jam. This is a Def Jam. No, I don't, it's not. I don't think he's on Def Jam anymore. Oh, got it. But what we are waiting on is for the Lil Wayne Project, Collie Grove 2, to drop. Got it. And so, Which allegedly, they announced it's that. next. Yeah, they announced that. Obviously, Wayne's on the album. Um, yeah. But Wow, so you got to work with a lot of cool, different people you had. Oh, it's crazy, That was man. your first Wayne record, right? Yeah, it's you know, Wow. That's a round. Run, fire. Had a run. Well, and, and, and by the way, now, do you feel, I feel, this is what I feel. With what you guys just articulated with where kind of, I guess for lack of a better term, let's call it traditional hip hop, you know, yeah. the thing, that kind of golden era feeling, right. right? It feels like it is in such a healthy place that like you're going to go to it. Like it, he said you had a great run. I think the run is just kind of going to the next chapter. Yeah, right? how, do, how do you feel? I feel like it's a new chapter for me because this is my 10th compilation and I'm going to keep it real, like chasing 40 rappers every album is not fun. Right. So like moving forward, I got an album with Boldy James that's like done. Got an album with Nems that's like done. I got like all these projects that I'm, we're going to start putting out. And That is a more pleasant way to live, right? Yeah, I just watched that interview Preem just did um, with Shout Out to Noah. Not, yeah. And he was like, yo, we're going back to the one producer albums. Yeah. And we, you know, Al's been crushing it. Yes. And, but even with Al, Al's like putting out four song projects and being like, Man, I ain't trying to put twenty records together. Nobody is. It's, like, it's too much work just to even do it. It's like even if it's work. my song, it's gonna be probably a single, or I might do an EP. But in the meantime, I'm just focused on the actual music. And well, and in some ways, you can uh, a put less stress on yourself, and b for the way people consume now, give them small doses more frequently. Yeah, absolutely. Without having to stress yourself. I mean, on a round trip, what do we got? That's kind of how I thought when I dropped the Wu single because we dropped that. Shot the flex, he went crazy on it when it yeah. dropped. Like three days before the song was about to come out, me and P Peter and Massapil had a convo. We we're like, we have to get the Rizzo to like co sign this because Ray Rayquan kept warning me. He's like, the Abbott got a co sign it. You can't just put out a Wu record. Get on the phone, the Rizzo. And he's like, I love it. He's like, you got the green light. You know, he got a you know, he got a little chunk of it, but it's I would have gave him more than he got. Right. But it's like, man, to have we that Wu Tang logo is licensed by the RZA. Like yeah. that's a big deal for me. Oh, yeah, thirty years huge, after yeah. thirty years after thirty six chambers and I got a, a Wu with record. The, with the Wu yeah. And that's Method Man, Ghostface, Raekwon, Inspector Deck. That's a real Wu Tang record. Um by the way, you gave me this too. Um yeah, we got to talk about Mac. Yeah, and um, the 8292, which comes up a lot on streaming services, too. This does a lot of numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, you terminology and Mac. Look how cute this picture is of Mac. That's Mac's first mean? feature. He came, it was his first trip to New York. So yeah, take, take us through that. When How did, how did you first hear about wow. him? So I, I kind of fronted on um, on Wiz Khalifa at first because I like the first records I heard, it was like Say Yeah and a couple other things. Mm -hmm. I was like, it's cool. But then he put out Kush and Orange Juice. And I remember hitting Artie at a Ross. I was like, hey, man. Like and He's like, yo, bro, you passed. And I was like, okay, I respect that. So when Matt came out, Artie brought him to me first. And I was like, let's bring him the Shade 45. He went off on the radio, all that. And um, I remember being like, I'm not messing up again, bro. Get him in the, like, let's go to my crib. And he's like, okay. So this is and, when he's a baby. I mean, yeah, he's I mean like, he looks like he's like his 18 years like, old. It was old. his 18th birthday. Well, it was his 18th maybe, birthday. Maybe like a day or two within his 18th birthday. And so you just brought him to your crib? He came in the crib, knocked out like four or five records. And um, he just kept coming like through the years. Pause. And um, we like one Big day, we, I remember Big being pause. in Manhattan and um, 
He's like, oh, let's go back to the studio in Brooklyn. I'm going to get a cab. I was like, hell no. I was like, it's raining out, bro. Like, get it. We're going to be standing here forever. You know, it's still one of his first trips here. I was like, we're taking the train. And we took the, the J train back to Bushwick. And he had, like, it was him and, like, probably six of his homies. And I remember being on the train, like, us having that, that convo convo where it's like, yo, you got, like, you got responsibility with what you're doing right now. Mm. Like, hold it down and of course he did but we're having the conversation on the train and people were just looking at us like who the hell is this guy because right. I'm talking to Mac like you're about to be that dude and people are looking at him he got zits all over his face like <laughs> I miss him man and him and Sean Price too like I did a record with him and Sean Price that those two were like from polar opposite uh, childhoods yeah. and the way they grew up and they like they just had such a similar personality with being like goofy and just having you, fun. But you, were they together when you did it or no? You just put them on the same record? Nah, but um, it was like I asked Sean who would you do a song with and I asked Mac because I was working on my ex, uh, extended play album and they like both answered each other. Wow. Like Mac's like I bet want to do something with Sean. Well yeah, that, that one doesn't surprise me. Sean going to Mac yeah, Miller. Sean yeah, Sean approving yeah. of, of, of Mac is... Yo, but he was like that. Like, there was a million rappers I would name. He'd be like, nah, trash, trash, trash. <laughs> like, popping rappers. He'd be like, nah, I don't like him. I don't like him. He didn't like... He only liked people that he liked. And and, and Mac was in the in the lane that he would like. The, the way they records. got cool was Twitter, though. Like, Mac would post something, like, funny, and Sean would jump in on it. Like, they literally got it. Like, Hex. Shout out to Hex Murder. Shout out to Hex Murder. That's my dog. But he's, like, one of those guys that, like... You'll get cool with like just joking on Twitter, right? And it becomes this like then you meet each other in real life. Like I knew Hex before his accident. Shot man, I can't shout out Hex enough. That's like he's like the mayor of Detroit, mayor he's the Detroit, man. and one of the early mayors of Black Twitter. Period. Like he was, yeah. you know, and and integral to Sean. Like the way Trick Tricks respected in Detroit. Right. That's how right. Hex is with like the the, the underground. Yep. You know, with the Black Milks and the Danny Brown and Royce. Everything. Yeah. So uh, shout out to Hex. Did you were you surprised uh of Max growth musically nah, for the last never. Two, You knew he was the first day he ever was? came to my crib, he's like, I play the drums, I play keys, I play bass. Like he he was iller than people know. He would sit down and make learn a later. Yeah, now they know. I mean, cause now I I always said this after Swimming in Circles came out. Max Path was going to be that in 10 years, he was going to win not rap album of the year. He was going to win album of the yeah. year, like for just making whatever he would have. A he definitely inspired. He definitely inspired Kendrick and all them to like do what they do. And like Mac was like, oh, to get a little bit off the. Yeah. So you can yeah. still be a rapper hell and yeah. go to. But be more musical. And be more musical and yeah. not sell out on your rapping roots. Yeah. Like Mac didn't fall for the trap that a lot of white rappers before him do, which is if they change it, they lose rap. He just added everything into it. But he's I still mean, rapping. He did on an album with Pharrell like the same year he did one with Mad Lib. Like, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is oh, pretty Mac remarkable. Is, Mac man. story's crazy. That's coming out soon. Yeah, that's what they're saying. I heard I heard some, some yeah. stuff. Man. You did? You, yeah, Mad Lib played you some stuff? Yeah, I actually, shout out to uh, Kwali. I, I helped them clear Mac for the project oh, for that the just came out. Okay, yeah. I was sitting on that for a while. And um, it was like that record. Just hearing Mac, a fresh verse, is like you get chills, man. The same way if I hear something by Sean I never heard, or Prodigy, or it was, man. And you worked with all of them. You know how aggravating it is trying to put an album together when my go-tos were Prodigy, Mac Miller, and Sean Price? <laughs> right. It got, yeah. it got sad for a minute. I mean, it's still sad, but I remember there was like, it was around the 8 album that I was like really discouraged because these they're not just these rappers I go to they're my friends yeah. everybody on any of my albums we go and shoot pool go and drink like that there's nobody on the albums that I don't hang out with like it's all I consider everybody you know uh, listen man a friend the music's incredible Thank um you. and you know you're just kind of you know your stick to itiveness in the game is appreciated thanks man. and you're also just you know I've been on a big flower kick this week with the kid Capri and the Buster Rhymes you're also just a love dude in the New York hip hop and and large, but I know it here in the hip hop community. Like everyone fucks with you, you know what Thanks, I mean? Man. And it's uh, it's paid off. Nah, I appreciate it. It means a lot, you know, to just be here, but to to have that that love is real. Are you uh, one last question before you go? You being just a uh, a consummate professional and a lover of all great things, quality music and, and hip hop specifically. Um, what are you what are you loving out here right now that you're just hearing. What do you like movement movement wise, right. musically? What are you seeing that you're like, yo, this ain't love, what I um, do, but I love it. It's right. dope. Nah, I love uh 
this band called Salt. You heard them? I love Salt. Love Salt. Love love Quest Salt. Love put me onto them, and uh, we were out in Ohio in the middle of the pandemic, and the rest of the world shut down, and we're just throwing parties at Dave Chappelle's every night. It was crazy. Um, he put me onto them out there. So like when I hear it now, it like brings me back to these like crazy, crazy uh, experiences. I like them. I like um, something I get excited for when I for new music. It's like uh, I like. Let me think. I'm trying not to say the obvious because you know I do my playlist every week on my radio right, show. So right, it's right. like all that, but that's um, fine too, though. Yeah. I love Stove God, man. Stove God, like, I even like when he just does record singing. Like, I just <laughs> he hits like these like notes that it, it, it's it's he his is style. unique in that way. He yeah. owns a style of that. Um, man, I like a lot of these new cats, man. Like Red Veil and um, Red Marco Veil. Plus is oh uh, JID. Yeah, yeah JID fire. That last project he did was incredible. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of where I listen to the gym. Which I need to start going more. <laughs> That's the problem. You haven't been listening to enough. You gotta go to the gym, bro. I've been yeah. nonstop. Like uh, well, now, that, now round trip's been out about what four weeks now? Yeah, a three, month. Four weeks. A couple, a month. Yeah, not yeah. even two. Yeah, there you go. So look, man, Static Selected, we love you, bro. Love Keep going. You, Thank Thanks you for coming by the program. Static. Y'all go listen Static. to this round trip. If you love hip hop, spend some time on this right here. Static Selected, one time. Mm-hmm. Give it up for him. How should we close? What you want to close with? Let's play uh, the Conway Absol. Shout out to Absol, one of my. Man, that's he is just one of the best rappers alive, Conway as well. And my brother Bun B. Yeah. Shout out to Bun B, the killing it out there with the burgers. burgers trail. He had burgers. the number one fountain in America this week. Like, you know, like fountain drinks are served. Yeah. Number one in the whole country. How do you because of it? how busy the burger spot is. Trail wow. burgers, Houston. How do people know the He's fountain out of here, stats. Because they have to come and I don't know, the way they're ordering <laughs> they have to order the what do you call it? The stuff to make the, the, thing. the things. Look, um, let's play that show me too. Just show oh, yeah, Joey please, some love man. on the Shout way to out Joey. too, man. Joey's working on you know a lot of new music that just is vibe. Man. I love what he's doing. Give it up, Static Select. One time, thank you, bro.